Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Nick. We are Working Class Nerds. Cue the intro. That's right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is July 22nd, 2021, and you can find this 114 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you find these podcasts in the whole world and the galaxy. Anyways, you can watch me completely fail at video games, but occasionally win at video games at, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. And also, too, now officially, we can say officially, Nick had his first ever official stream this past Monday. So now you can check him on Mondays at 8.30 or 9 p.m. Eastern time at NickBurn51 because he doesn't know what time he's going to wake up from his nap. You can also <laughs> find the both of us on Twitter. I am at MarcusB814. And I am at Nick Vern. That's N-I-C-K-V-E-R-N. And this week's episode, we're talking with Rayu. He is a Twitch streamer who frequently plays SOTOR PvP, but more recently Dauntless. Plus, he is the king of Chimeri's Twitch stream and an all-around <laughs> awesome guy. So, Could he be an awesome Kai guy? I think that's safe to say. All right. So welcome to the show, Rayu. How's it going? And what have you been up to? Hey, it's going great, guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And Nick, thank you so much for that awesome intro, dude. <laughs> of course. We got always got to pump you up. Pump, pump, <laughs> gotta, pump the jam. Pump it up. <laughs> gotta be careful. Chimeri will try to pop the balloon ever so often. No way. No way. Oh. I'll just tell Chimeri, like, get out of here. This isn't Chimeri's time. This is Rayu's time. This is the Rayu episode. Chimeri can have his own rep- episode later if he wants. But yeah. But right now, it's all about you. So what have you been doing in and out of game? Uh, so recently, I've returned to the world of Dauntless. Um, it was a game that I had played early on in beta stages and just you know kind of put it away uh, for a number of years and just recently kind of came back to it to see the changes. And mainly SWOTOR uh, outside of that. And outside of video games... You know, I moved. Uh, Whoa! Kinda, uh, yeah, we moved from uh, we moved from Florida back to North Carolina. So get her done. Exactly. <laughs> <That's not laughs> you didn't move to Alabama. No, that, that's what happens. You know, Yankee Doodle over here always likes to think of me as the country <laughs> bumpkin. So, uh, yeah, of course, country <laughs> bumpkin. I have a, a teammate on my paintball team um, who's literally from Alabama originally. So I always make make. Yeah, fun of when him. I think of Rayu, I think of Tractor Supply. <laughs> wow, <laughs> <laughs> it is a fantastic oh store. God. I'll have you know. Yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But no, so you say you moved. So were you guys in a house in? Florida or an apartment, and then you guys bought a house in North Carolina. Wait a minute. But why move from Florida to North Carolina? Uh, so we were in an apartment, um, and, you know, unfortunately, COVID's a terrible thing. Um, For sure. Can't but confirm. I, yeah. Lost my job there, and an opportunity presented itself back in North Carolina, which is uh, where I'm, you know, originally from. So we took advantage of it, and to be honest, the cost of living in North Carolina is significantly lower than florida sweet Uh, north carolina come on and raise up (laughs) what in the world for that one man i don't even know i'm showing my age i don't know (laughs) something about like spinning a white towel above your head i don't know what it is i'll think of it while it's It's like a mega church thing is there like a a rap thing is there a mega church thing and no 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 it's not church yeah, it's a music video. Oh, you lost me, man. Yeah, I'm old as shit. What can I say? You guys are young. I'm old. Anyway, so you moved up to North Carolina for a job. Yeah, how's that going up there? Uh, it's going great so far. Um, really enjoying the work, enjoying the staff that I'm a part of, and just enjoying the challenge of entering a new line of work. Um, I've never done insurance coordination before, so it's actually a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot of numbers, a lot of understanding insurance laws and regulations as they change. So it's 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 a good time. Wow, that's exciting! So you know how to cheat the system? 
A little bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, next time I hear a fender bender, we know who we're calling. Oh. Like, how, how do I phrase this properly so yes. it all gets paid for? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's my weird. fault, but how do I get out of that? Right. Now, did you move there solo? No, no, no. Um, my, my wife accompanied me uh, as we moved down here and well, up here, actually. <laughs> and our dog, uh, Damien, you may have seen him from time to time on stream or heard him in the background. He's very vocal. Um, and then, of course, our newest addition to the to the family here, our newest dog, Duke. He is a puppy. And Duke. Yeah. Love him to death. Love him all to death. But uh, we, what kind of pup? Uh, so we're not entirely sure. They when we asked the story, when we picked him up, they couldn't tell us exactly what his breed was. He does have a blue coat. And based on like how big we think he's going to get, he could be a blue tick hound. I'm very hopeful. Nice. Cool. Uh, but yeah, we moved out this way and got a house, um, nice piece of property and it's plenty of room for the dogs to run. And I'm, I'm very happy being back. It's a much slower pace than Florida. So it helps. Do you, do you have family in North Carolina? I do. Um, most of my family is from North Carolina. Uh, so oh, so it's just like being home. That's exactly. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Tractors, <laughs> tractor supplies, a lot diesel, of fields, fields. Yep. Can't forget the fields. Is there a lot of cows in North Carolina? No, right? There are you're... actually oh, plenty, there of, plenty of cows. The area that we live in more in particular has an actual farm. So like what you're talking about, Marcus, big tractors, big cows, all of it. It's all there. Yeah, exactly. So you are the country bumpkin. It's okay. You can own it. <laughs> yeah, just own it. Did you hear him whisper? In the yeah, background? he's like, I'm gonna. Oh my God. This fucking Yankees gonna die. Don't call me a Yankee. I hate the New York Yankees. But, you, right but you're a Yankee. That that's no, just what it is. No, I am a Sox fan. Yes, I'm a New Englander, bro. It's different. It's we're different. We're like extra grumpy Northern people. We're like hardened. <laughs> but um. What was I going to say? See what you did? You started playing with Maggie, and now she wants to squeak the fucking ball. I know. Well, it's not my fault. She put the ball on my foot. So, side note, Marcus's dog, Maggie, loves her squeaky ball. She's a German Shepherd. Loves her squeaky ball. And as we were talking here, she just comes over and plops her ball right in my foot. I'm like, well, I can't throw it. She gave me the puppy dog eyes. You can't resist those. No, you can't. (sighs) But anywho, um, do you want to talk about Dauntless now or later? later okay we'll We'll get into all that later so stay tuned for that so in that case marcus how's it going and what have you been up to wait a minute i'm listening it's my turn yes i got a lot to talk about so Uh, you're gonna go and then i'm gonna go and then we're gonna talk about sotor so marcus what have you been up to okay wow there's so much to talk about um i don't know where to start because i'm not used to going right now okay (laughs) you want me Um, to go first then (laughs) no no. You, okay. you act like we've All never right. done this, this before. Is, this it's is what happens when we time. screw with Marcus in the pre show. This is, no, this is literally just, a fifty percent of the time thing. Fifty percent of the time <laughs> it works it, all it, the time. Yes. Anyway, moving on. So let's start with Destiny Two. So it's official. I am in the thirteen hundreds in my gear rating. I grinded out the summer of s- shit solstice of heroes gear. So I did level one which was the blue gear. Then I got level two, which is the purple gear. And then I just finished the level two and I got the level three gear, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it before the season's over, but I'm going to try like hell to be able to do it. Um, I think there's like three or four things for the gear that you can do after the, the seat, like this little summer event season is over <clears throat> because there might not just be enough time, but Either way, I got the gear. It's pretty freaking awesome. Um, it's kind of nice being a part of a game like in its current state. What I mean by that is like, you know, when like you're playing a game and there's an expansion come out and it's like your first ex- real expansion with the game. Like I've been playing this before this expansion and this is like your first expansion. Yeah, it's like if you if you started playing Swotor for the first time right now and you're a part of the hype of the 10th anniversary right and you like like, just finished all the other content and like boom now you're ready for the new expansion exactly so like you feel like you're even more connected yeah that's how i feel with destiny 2 i've actually logged more hours in destiny 2 than i have in swotor in the last two weeks really yeah wow wow yeah that's a lot of hours yeah i think i think 
I don't even want to talk about how many hours. But either way, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more hours than he's gotten sleep well, this week, probably. It sounds no. like it. <laughs> no, but either way, what I mean, what I like about Destiny, and I've said it a million times, but I'm going to reemphasize, it has the MMO bits, which I love mm-hmm. now that I'm an old man. Uh, it has the uh, first person action of Call of Duty. Yep. And it has a good enough story to where like sci-fi, where it is good enough to suck me in. Mm-hmm. But the fourth magic point of it is the graphics are fantastic yeah and if anybody knows me i'm a graphical whore i love high resolution i like high frame rates like my monitor is a 4k 120 hertz and if my game does not produce 120 hertz at 4k i need an upgrade that's fair yep that's just who i am i feel like i'm the opposite of that though marcus like i play swotor on like potato graphics i play dauntless on potato graphics i've never been you know it has to be the the most pristine thing i'm more like i enjoy the combat systems and the engaging storylines more than anything until you see it in full-fledged graphical awesomeness yeah Yeah. if you saw swotor on ultra or even high you'd be like i never want to go back yeah like but like i couldn't do it now if now is again right now is not the time to get a new computer or parts because um you you can't get things which i that's a whole topic for another day but at the same time you know i I pride myself on that. It's all I really do. This is pretty much my computer is my hobby. Yeah, I would say 100%. So like my computer, that's where I put my time in. Anyway, rambling in SWOTOR, the working class Siths killed the tanks and nightmare. First time the whole full team was there. And then last night we cleared the minefield and we actually started to prog um, Kefis, which is the final boss. We got a lot of work to do there. It's going to be a long trend, like long grind, but we'll get there. And in stream news, it's awesome. Thank you to everybody. I say this all the time, but thank you. It means so much. The community is growing so much every day. My favorite thing in the world in stream is the chat. When everybody is chatting with me, it means so much. Like, I don't know how many people are watching because I turned that stupid view counter thing off. It's like not accurate half the time anyway. Well, I, for me, I don't I, I don't want to know. Right. Yeah. I measure a success of a stream by people chatting with me because I love it. Yeah. That, yeah. I love when people chat with me on it. Um, but either way, stream is going awesome. We're at 796 uh, followers. Oh, can I tell you? Yeah. So I had 798. And when I logged in last night for the stream or no two nights on tuesday tuesday yeah tuesday i my follower goal said 798 yeah. and i went to twitch and it said 796 and i at the end of the night and i'm like huh well that's weird yeah so i lost two but gained a bunch i feel like i'm so i can taste 800 <laughs> oh yeah it's four away i can taste it you got it man and, and i i last night i was like I'm at 796. Nope. If they were new to the channel, they were like, nope, we are not going to be 800 for this dude. <laughs> they denied it. Um, but we'll get there. I'm hoping Saturday. I'm ready to explode. But now, like the real conversation about talking about what I'm going to do for the 1K stream, that's a big deal. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm in that zone where I'm like, I'm almost there. Yeah. Like the 1K, I can see it coming. Right. I mean, it's still a ways away. Don't get it wrong. But like, I should start thinking about what I want to do for the party. I think you definitely need to be wearing that Hawaiian shirt. And the oh, short shorts be. need to make an appearance. Oh, Nick doesn't know about the short shorts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God damn it. How does Nick not know about the short shorts? Because he was on Let's vacation. Go! It's because he was on vacation and I did not pass that along to him. Who Wait. wears short shorts? Oh, shit. Marcus wears short shorts. Shit. Let's go. Short shorts hype. I want a short shorts emoji. Yes. Just the shorts. Are they tan? They're pink. That's even better. Wear it with the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Truffle shuffle it up. Let's go. 
That you know what's uh, gonna happen? Someone's going to clip him doing the truffle shuffle in the Hawaiian yes. shirt and the pink shorts, and you that's should. his intro from now on. That's all he can do for his intro. We'll get eight tracks involved. It should be like a his a gif of that if somebody donates like ten bucks or something preposterous. Oh yes. Yes. Listen, see, you're this welcome. is the Marcus B814 channel, not the Ray You and Nick show. Okay. <laughs> Well, I don't even know how. Okay, so like I forget that anything you say on Twitch can be clipped. I know. <laughs> Atrax right? is always hot on the clips. All right, so I forget that shit. Yeah, and somehow, some like, and I get baited, and they bait me, and they're like, "Who wears short shorts?" And then I'll start singing the song because I put it in my head, and then that oh one wait, time, so that's a th- really thing that they do? Yes. Oh. I sent I him. Just, I just said that off the top of my they head. Clipped it. That's I fantastic. sent him. I sent him the gif of the Family Guy episode where Joe is is has Bonnie's legs after the surgery, and that's been the trend for him. That's awesome. No, I, it's not. Yes, it is. That's what they did to me. It's fantastic. Anyways. But anyway, so uh, nerds community, thank you so much. Don't forget to join the Discord. And Nick, what have you been doing? Well, there's a lot, but you've been on vacation. Uh, so and, yeah, wait, yeah. can I just say one I more thing about vacation? Actually, yeah. So when you talk to somebody all the time, and then they just disappear for a week, it sucks. Because usually I'll call Nick during the day or at the end of the day, and I'll go, uh, "Hey, what's up? Whatever." No, like, what that's not doing? what you say. Um, me? Yeah, you. Uh, oh, you'll call me like bef- right before I'm going to leave work, and I'll be like. Clinical trials office, Nick speaking. How yes, can I help you? Yes, that's what you say. Because I work in a clinical research like part Lab. of the hospital. Anyway, so what I'm saying is so he was gone for a week and it sucks. Anyways, go ahead, Nick. So I went on vacation in Maine. That's um where my family goes all the time, went with the fam. But I had my own room uh with a TV, obviously, and I brought the switch up. So I finally, finally, finally beat Breath of the Wild hundred percent. Well, not hundred percent, sorry. I beat Ganon. So there's no way I'm 100%ing that game. But I hadn't done it. I'd left it on only beating two of the um, Divine Beasts, which are like the two out of the four dungeons in the game. Um, And I just like put it down. I sort of got sick of it or whatever, but I had like a bunch of good gear and stuff. Excuse me. I talked about it on the show a bunch and I finally did it. I finally got through Hyrule Castle and beat Ganon. I will say if anybody's trying to beat it, um, first thing you want to do once you've like, once you're like, okay, almost ready to, to storm the castle and go try to fight Ganon. First thing you need to do is learn how to parry. Cause that is a complete and utter game changer for fighting against the guardians. Their big, like laser missile, laser beam thing. If you can parry that, you know, three times in a row for mo- the biggest ones that kills them. And then you don't even have to use a weapon against them. Really? Yeah. That sounds so cheese dick. Well, it's hard to do. The timing's tricky. So if you kill a few of them, and then you can get a bunch of parts from them. And then in the all the way in the top north, like top right corner of the map, there's the like Akala lab. Basically, it's the ancient tech lab in the Akala region. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but you can there's a vendor there where you can buy um, ancient like part ancient like weapons and, and armor and stuff. And the armor yep. is crazy expensive. Expensive. Each piece is like 2000 rupees. But you, the important thing is you want to get the ancient shields. So the ancient shields automatically parry all the guardian attacks, including when Ganon does it. So a, you can get more parts and buy more stuff. And all, so all you have to do is when a guardian's attacking you, just lock onto it and hold your shield up, and it auto parries laser beam and shoots it right back. Can at you them. repair that shield, or will it get destroyed? So that shield doesn't take damage when it when you, the laser beam bounces off of it. Oh. So it doesn't matter. Right. So my point being, it's there's a minor spoiler for the for the Ganon fight, but there's a point in the Ganon fight where you have to parry his laser beam attack. And if you have that shield, you just automatically do it. Bounce it back, boom, you're, you're good. And you run up and you know hit it with your sword. But um I fought him once before and I had like one shield and that was it. And I missed my parry. And it, it did, got destroyed. So, like, I literally couldn't beat him. So then I went back and got some shields, got an ancient shield. I got the Hylian shield, which is, like, the best shield in the game. Um, but it does not have the automatic parry function. So, anyways, cheat code. Get the ancient shield. That helps you begin it a lot. It was pretty cool. The The ending, the fight is cool. 
Um, what le- like the cinematics leading up to the fight where the champions help you and stuff is really cool. Um, I get, it's like an older game, so I can just spoil like what happens. But basically, they help if you do all four like of the divine beasts, it knocks off half of Ganon's health. Right, which is it's, it's basically like if you put the work in early, you can beat Ganon easier. Yeah, definitely. It's and not it makes, in- and it makes the final fight almost easier. Yeah. The crazy part is, what is the rating on Breath of the Wild? Like the game rating? Yeah. Oh, like E or at T or M or whatever. I think it's E for everyone. Okay, but like, what? What's who's the youngest kid that has beaten that game? Like legit, that game is tricky as shit. Yeah, there's no way like an eight year old's beating that. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy to me. I don't know. Mate, it's, it's, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, I, I think like Breath of the Wild and just any of the Zelda games is for like exploring, just kind of getting used to like open world concepts. Yeah, because I mean, like think of Destiny for example, Marcus. Um, outside, well, outside of instances, like can't you go to planets and it's all just open world? Yes, you can gather the, and fight, and then there's like events that that come in and spawn at right. certain times. The craziest part for Destiny is, and I'm sure it's kind of like, well, Breath of the Wild isn't, well, it's vertical, but it's not. I don't know how to explain it. Like Destiny, like you'll go into a building, and like a doorway will open only if you walk next to it, but it doesn't even look like a door. And then that'll go into a, a room that'll take you like 30 flights down into like the ground. And it's some lost sector. So for me, like the, the, the level design of like destiny and like breath of the wild is crazy. Yeah. I think the craziest thing for me with breath of the wild is like the physics that they actually put into the game. Yeah. Like how you can do, like if you're on a boat, you, you can, can like move the boat by physics. Yeah. By like freezing the time and then like smacking it and then the un- time unfreezes and you fly forward. Yes. Or like if you like push the wind against it, it'll go. Right. Or, yeah. or like if you catch like the grass on fire, it'll cause an updraft and then you can jump and use your hang glider and it'll pick you up. But that's what I'm saying. Like me, I am way too stupid to figure that shit out. Right. Like I'm- I am very linear. Right, you're like go forward, kill the things. Even like in Destiny, like the whole jumping thing brings me back to uh Halo. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like I'm I'm getting better at it, but I'm still not anyway. I sorry. gotcha. But what it, so what uh, overall, what would you give Breath of the Wild now that you've beaten it? A score, ten out of uh, out of ten. Um honestly, like nine or above. In terms of like a game, there's so many cool things to do in that. Like I don't like I'm not going to be I'm not going to 100 percent that game because there's a lot of like go find the things literally like there's 900 and something or 899 Koroks that you can find. I don't know if you can find any of those, but um, that's just to expand your inventory. And then there's 120 shrines in the base game. Yeah, that's I, crazy. I think I got I got a lot. I got 50, but like that's a preposterous amount. I'm not going to find all those. Um, there's three mazes you can do. I really didn't want to do any of those. A maze? Yeah, it's like a literal maze, like a labyrinth. You can like, but you have to like walk through it and like solve puzzles as you go and like fight things. And it was like, it seemed pretty resource intensive. Yeah. And I didn't really care that much to like, I wanted to just work towards, you know, beating it. Like the main yeah. quest line. I'm terrible at puzzles. I'm not too bad at them, but like it was all, it's, they take a long time. Yeah, like uh, Jedi Fallen Order. When I think of a puzzle, when you're in Ilum, yeah, it took me a little while to figure out how to like heat up that ice wall. Oh yeah, yeah, you got to move the things around so the sun heats it up properly. Yeah, and like it took me a little while to figure that out. Where other people were like, "Oh, I knew what it was in like three seconds." And that I'm one like, didn't take me long. The the ball puzzle on I forgot what planet it was when you're in that temple. Yes. That took me a long time to figure out. There's a lot of moving parts there. Yep. It's like when you get the swing ability at the end of it mm-hmm. or something like that. That was hard. But um no, the puzzles aren't too typically aren't too bad in Breath of the Wild. They're usually kind of straightforward. Like you only have two or three mechanics you're working with, so like you know, okay, I got to use one of these, but overall like I wouldn't I'm I'm hard pressed to give anything a 10. Like there's bugs sometimes, but like it's pretty damn close. 
you know, in terms of what you're looking for in a game, it's a Zelda in the like you're getting a Zelda game. It was completely and utterly like groundbreaking in terms of that franchise. Totally put it on its head. It's not linear at all. It's com- super open world. It's like as about it's, open world as you can ask for. It's too open world for me. Yeah, but that's not the game's fault. You know what I mean? No, that, no, and no, like, no. To like take away from a score, because because you're right. I, for my preference, it's too immoral for me too. Like I don't like how, um, in the cooking mechanic, like I don't know what the hell I'm doing, and I just like would hey, you have to just try shit. And a lot of the game is you just gotta try stuff. But that's not that's a personal thing. That's not something that's like I should take away from the score from. You know what I mean? Right. It's almost like honestly, um, the <sighs> I'm trying to think this through. Like, I, and here's a here's a decent way I think to put it. In terms of like me appreciating appreciating it as a game or as a piece of art or as a piece of of something for that somebody made, right? That's like a ten out of ten. In terms of like Nick's enjoyment, I give it like an eight out of ten. Sure, I, me like I think open world like, um, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Okay. Red Dead Redemption. Right. A rock star. Okay. Game, yeah. Basically. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect example. Yeah. Like I feel like that is an open world game that I can get into because there's a clear cut path, right? Breath of the wild. You leave that little center Island yeah, or the, the plateau, plateau. Yeah. And then they're like, good luck. You so, need to conquer these four points. See ya. Yeah. There's no like, go to this town then go to that town. And then yeah, you'll there's get like, to this yeah, point. yeah. Go to Kakaru village. Right. It's none of that. And then once you discover something, you're like, they're like, Oh, do you want to do this quest? Sure. And then you go to do the quest and you get your dick stomped in. And you're like, why did I just like, where am I? And then you do the Google on, oh, what's the best path? And then everybody's telling you to go each individual way. And the other thing is, is like, once you get off the plateau, every, the game intensifies like crazy. Yeah. It's like, it's not, you're not in baby town anymore. Exactly. Like the hobgoblins or whatever they are. And then like, I don't know, so many, like the mechanics in the game are wild to me. Like, (laughs) The whole to like lock on, yeah, and, like, like shoot, like that. freeze time, throw a bomb, freeze time, unfreeze time, blow the bomb, the bomb blows up the barrel, blows up the village, and then you get a chest that pops out like four hundred meters away. Da-da-da-da. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyways, we could talk about Breath of the Wild, but <clears throat> I'm calling it now. The Switch Two comes will come out when Breath of the Wild launches. I think that's that's correct. As soon as Nintendo can get all the microchips. Right. Um, let's see. In I want to circle back to Marvel stuff. So I finished Loki, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, la, 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 la. So let's talk about my stream. So I had my first official official stream Monday. Burr, 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 burr. Not a test stream, a real one. And you can find me at twitch.tv slash NickVern51, N-I-C-K-V-E-R-N-5-1. Uh, every Monday night. I don't know if I'm going to do 8 o'clock, 8.30, or 9. I will iron that out eventually, but a roundabout's there. Roundabout. I'll post in the Discord each week when I'm going to pop on. I still think, though, Nick, you should push really hard and do like stream as much as you possibly can over the course of the next three weeks so you can make affiliate. Yeah, and just get it done. And then, and then go just to... go back to your one day a week. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I do. I definitely do. Um, so on Monday, I played Call of Duty. I played... Uh, just multiplayer pretty much there's a cool paintball map that's a breath um breath of the wild a black ops 2 uh, map that they brought back which i thought was pretty cool i played a bunch of that then i just played a bunch of domination um i enjoyed myself a lot shout out to rayu and atrax for hyping up the stream the chat i mean and marcus of course for everything he's done to help me get going here absolutely which is a whole it's a whole hell of a lot thank you so much You're Um, welcome and yeah, without you guys in the chat, it makes the the stream would be incredibly boring. Yes, the chat makes your stream big time. Like it makes your stream special. Yeah, would you agree, Rayo? Oh, absolutely. If if your chat's not, if nobody's interacting with you, and you know, at least pity laughing at your bad <laughs> jokes, then right. it's kind of just you know, it, it takes the enjoyment out of it. Right. Um. So. What I learned from that stream, I think going forward, I'm not going to. Well, I know going forward, I'm not going to play a multi uh, like Call of Duty like that. I want to play something story driven because, as a viewer of that, right, like you're, 
it gets old really quickly. Like for me, it's all novel because I'm paying attention to the super duper minute details. Like I'm trying to find people and shoot them or whatever in multiplayer. But for a viewer, like you're base, you're looking at me and engaging with me, but then the gameplay is basically like the same 10, 15 second clip of me running, shooting, dying, running, shooting, dying, running. You know what I mean? There's nothing novel. There's no story to that. There's nothing for you to follow along with. So like it almost takes the game portion of the stream out of it. I feel the same way about rating. You know what I mean? Stream. Because like for rating for you, I mean, I've told you this before, like people just see flashing colors and don't really know what's going on, especially in nightmare rating, you know? Right. Yep. It's, it's just flashing colors. On and the screen. you see me die and die and die and die and die. And it's the same boss. People come in the beginning of stream and come back. You're still fighting the same boss. Yep. And yeah. are you any closer to beating it? No. no. Yeah. And it's just, it doesn't, it takes the game portion of the stream out of it, you know? Yes. So, that being said, my at least rough idea of what I want to do going forward is play something story driven. So I'm like, okay, what do I want to play that I love that's story driven? Either I'm think I'm between either any of the Fallout games from Bethesda, so Fallout Three, Fallout New Vegas, or Fallout no. Four, or the Mass Effect trilogy that just got released, the new HD version. I actually came up with a better idea. Okay, Fallout seventy six. No, because that's an MMO. I, I, I vote for Fallout New Vegas. I played that growing yeah, up but, as a kid, and I, I it was a fantastic game. Very well designed. He's played he's played Fallout New Vegas for like three hundred hours. Excuse already. me, can you double that, please? Okay, so like you can't play like if you want a genuine experience. Yeah, but and, it's all new every time. No, it's not because you've probably <clears throat> played it every which way for hundreds of hours. That's not exciting. You're gonna play it and be like, I remember this part. No, you want to pick something to stream that is like because I can side with different people. New. Like you never played Mass Effect One. Fucking play it. I played Mass Effect One. How you dare did? You? How dare you? Oh, I didn't know you beat Mass Effect One. Yes. Okay. Well, or pick something else. Like there's so many games that are out there. Like the game Control. You know what I mean? Like that one game of the year. What about what, uh, what about um, Horizon Zero Dawn? That got ported <laughs> over to PC, and that's a Boom. beautiful game. Oh, I think that's the winner because I never I mean, played Horizon it, Zero Dawn. The, play the base game. The base game. There are expansions to it, but a hundred percent, the game is and so it's beautiful. open world and it's beautiful. Oh, it's oh, that, and the story is incredible. Oh, well, that's signed, sealed, delivered. Is it on Steam? Where do yes. I find that? Yeah, it's on Steam. All right. Well, I got my Astro C40 controller. I'll hook up to the PC and boom, chakalaka. That's a winner. I'm gonna play Horizon. So tune in on Monday. Uh, what's Monday's date? Monday, July 26th to see me playing Horizon Zero Dawn. I will definitely be doing that. All right. Anyways, um, one last thing before you say anything else. Did anybody see EA play today? No. Nope. Okay. So there was no Star Wars news, which is really weird to me because it's St- SWOTOR's, um, 10th anniversary. It's 10th, SWOTOR's 10th anniversary. And they, like EA is, they're not support, uh, whatever. Anyways, not marketing for it. Right. So Maggie. anyway, <laughs> um, did you hear that? Yes. In the background? Yeah. yeah. That was Maggie knocking over a bucket because the ball was next to it. And she realized it wasn't near her anyway. So the, my point here is that um, battlefield 2042 yep. just announced it's called like reveal or something, or I don't know what the mode is called. They're bringing back Battlefield 1942, Whoa. Battlefield Bad Company 2, what? Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, and Battlefield 2042. All the maps, all the gear. So you can have a World War, t- you can pick a World War II player. Yeah. And you can be a Battlefront Battlefield 2042 player, yeah, and pick a night. Uh, you could dr- fly with your guy. You could fly a World War II plane against a jet engine plane. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, goodness. like they showed in the in the um, and they showed in the trailer. Okay, How, dude, the balancing for that's no, no, got to no. be insane. Yeah, I think it's all like it's all spec to the same, right? I think the the gunner guns are probably the same like quality. Yeah. The the missiles that shoot off of it probably are all equal, but they sh- so you can create your own deathmatch. Let's call it. Oh, that's cool. They showed in the in the thing defibrillators from Bad Bad Company Two, right? Versus knives in World War Two. 
Oh, that's fun. And they showed 160, 128 people running at each other with defibrillators. And knives. And knives. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> like the game like is starting to look like game, world changing. Like real like Battlefield Bad Company 2 is my favorite battlefield of all time. Yeah, mine too. And like they threw a grenade and it landed on the ground and it showed the smiley face on it. Yeah. And then it showed like the outfits. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. those guys, and then it showed a bunch of the maps from Bad Company too. I'm like, I'm sold, I'm sold. This is signed, sealed, delivered. Like Oasis, I'm in. I'm in. Like I'm in. I'm I'm sold on Battle. And they haven't even revealed. I'm guessing it's the battle, uh, the battle royale mode. Yeah, they must they, have. They said yeah. it's coming later this year. They haven't announced it yet because it's probably not perfectly done. Yeah, or they're waiting for the more hype because I'm guessing it'll be free to play. Right. They've got to do that. Yeah. There's no way. Well, we did it. We threw the ball once. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so I think that is it for my stream stuff. So, okay. So Marvel stuff, and then we'll move it out along here. Um, I finished Loki. The Loki season finale was last Wednesday. The I will no spoilers. Spoiler free. Um, the show is incredible. The show sets up a absolute ton of stuff. Um for the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward. Like a lot more than you might think about between WandaVision and this, it sets up a, a really a large amount of things um, that are eventually going to, I think basically I think the next team up movie is the Doctor Strange movie, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So you, yep. so I want to run through, I want to run through the content that's like leading up to that. I have a list, please hold. So we've got WandaVision, right? Then Loki. Then Black Widow, which I haven't seen Black Widow. That's out now. Uh, actually, I was going to talk to you about that anyways after the show. Yeah. We should watch it in the basement. I agree. In my parents' basement. Yeah. Yeah. But your dad's got to upgrade his TV. I know. It's a 60-inch, and it, the, the wall is way too big for a 60-inch yeah. TV. That's a big TV, but like the wall is huge. You know what I mean? It's not a big TV anymore. It's like if you... It gotta... doesn't fit the space. The sound... The, the, the TV doesn't fit the sound. Right. The sound is like this incredible like surround sound with a giant 12 inch subwoofer, like four foot tall speakers in the front with like anyways, it's crazy. And then it's a 16 inch TV. That's not that's way too small for the space. But I digress. So you got WandaVision, you got Loki, you got Black Widow. I've not seen, but I have heard that the ending of Black Widow like sets things up for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If I had to guess, it's probably a cameo of like a big bad guy or something like that. Then we've got Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which is going to tie in as well. I think the big bad in that also gets involved. Um, well, because like I think that ties in with like Doctor Strange and all the mysticism stuff. Well, so I heard that Doctor Strange is going to be like the Captain America and the Iron Man in this next cinematic universe. Yeah, that's what I'm gathering as well. He's going to be the OG. Right. So you've got the Eternals, which comes... Uh, sorry, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is September 3rd, 2021. You've got The Eternals, which comes out November 5th, 2021. And I am super not familiar with The Eternals. I know it's a big comic line, but I'm just not yeah. familiar with that story. It's good. Um, then you've got Spider-Man No Way Home, yes. which, which is December 17th. I'm super looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, then finally, to cap it all off, the big you know, culmination of all these this content is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which is March 22nd, 2022. So you've got a three-month gap after Spider-Man to like for the hype to, to build up into 2022. My point being though, this is awesome that it's a completely different flavor of build up and like powers and all of these shows spoiler, pretty much spoiler free lead to like various mystic things in the realm of Dr. Strange type stuff. You know, like his powers are obviously he had the time stone way back when. Right. But all of his powers outside of that are like very mystical. Wanda's pit powers are like that, obviously. So it's interesting to see like a different, sort of path of of superpowers and like extravagance i guess i want to say but like awesomeness it's a it's a totally different path i think scarlet witch is going to be the big bad i don't know who the big bad's going to be but i think you should really finish loki i'm going to okay when? i watch i watch oh i don't know i just finished episode four like i watch twitch rayu i i Twitch is my TV. If I'm playing video games, I have Twitch up. Like, I don't watch TV. And, but, like, the problem is for me is, like, a new, like, Loki. I was like, dude, whatever. I'll get to it. Whatever. And then I start watching it, and I really like it. 
but then you have the um uh show what are you talking about the, then you have like then i sit down and watch the show mm-hmm. and i'm like whoa this is really good yeah i wouldn't hype it up for no reason no i know well and the other reason why is that tv right there yeah is fucking broke yeah well i should rephrase the hdmi port broke on the side because the kids were playing it ripped it out but the hdmi port broke inside the tv there's not another hdmi port not on the side okay so you can't get an hdmi part to plug in the roku on the inside they have extenders for the roku it doesn't fit i've tried i I bought it trust me so now but the tv is a 2016 model okay so you can't get disney plus directly on the tv yeah yeah it doesn't download updated apps basically yeah it's so it's dumb so that 55 inch lg is junk yep so i have to go buy a new tv uh, I mean, they're uh, cheap. You you guys can go shopping together for new TVs. <laughs> no, what'll happen? Okay, let me let me tell you. <laughs> this is what, what's what, going to happen. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to say, Nick, I need your help hanging a new TV. He's going to say, no problem, Marcus. What are you doing with the old TV? It, oh, we're probably going to load it into your car. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Move along. <laughs> okay, that's what's going to... I'm going to get a 55-inch TV. Right, and he'll be able to just plug into the back of it with the, whatever Roku thing he has, and boom. He yeah. can order a stand for it. It's over. See, Wait, you don't you have go, a stand Nick. for it? Nick's I thinking that ahead. shit out. Nick, listen, Nick knows. Nick, where'd you get the TV you have right now? Yeah, from you. Yeah, exactly. It's Every one from my old apartment in yeah. the hood back in the day. Yeah. I, as soon as I upgrade, Nick upgrades. Right. Make, it's a perfect balance. Yeah. Anyway. It's, it's a great deal. Uh, um, so that's it for me. Well, um, do you want to do you want to do the working class nerds update? Yes. Uh, do you want to tell them? Yeah, I sure do. So in working class nerds news, uh, you will see very soon if you have not. I yeah, we haven't posted anywhere. Right? Nope. So you'll see very soon that we are getting a brand new logo. For- well, we have a brand new logo. We do have a brand new logo. We have not released it to the public, uh, but we do have big plans for the new logo, which or I should say we have new, we have plans in the works, which required us to get a new logo. And I think it's cool. It's really like Marcus and I, it's a lot more simplified. It's not so chaotic. Um, it's still got some touches of S- star Wars. It's got clearly a podcast stuff, uh, elements to it. So Karis, uh, Karis who did the Marcus B eight one four logo, uh, the green Reaper logo and Nick's logo. Yep. He has done our podcast logo. And the reason why we're doing this is so for three years now, people have been asking for uh, T-shirts, merchandise, merchandising. And we I actually have been working on setting up a store. Yep. And in this process of this store, we sent in the logos, all of them passed, but one. And then we got <laughs> trademarked. Right. And they, they were like, like, look, it, we're not telling anybody. But we can't print this shirt because if we do, we're going to get sued by Disney. Yeah, because it's got our our logo has, you know, the Death Star and an X-Wing and TIE Fighters on it, which are all copyright. Right. And I was like, well, it was hand drawn by a Lucasfilm artist. And they're like, it doesn't matter. We can't print this shirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're like, all right, fair enough. So then we investigated uh, getting a new logo done. Right. So we investigated this new logo thing and the logo's done. Uh, we will post it in the Discord. I think that's the, probably the best place to put it. Yeah, I'd say so. And um, and we'll put it on the gram and stuff like that and Twitter. Um, but at the same time, uh, we're going to be opening up a store, and this store is probably come. It will be coming in August. Um, on launch day, it will have my logo, Nick's logo, the Working Class Nerds logo, mm-hmm. Kogus's logo, um, all launching on day one and this store is going to be an opportunity for all the streamers out there who may not have their own merch store that want their merch sold in a store um and we're going to be offering it to anybody who wants to put their logo on it and be able to sell their logo so even if you have one viewer and that viewer wants uh your t-shirt or your mom wants a t-shirt and you don't want you don't have a store to do it Put it on our store and we'll be happy to sell your shirt. It's all part of the nerds community. Yeah. So um, that is in the works, but we will be posting the logo 
um, later tonight. Yes. So to summarize, new logo for the podcast, new merchandise store coming down the pipeline in August, and new merchandise for your favorite streamers that are friends of the pod. Anyways, in SOTOR news, what do we got happening, Marcus? So they... <clears throat> we got a message from Jackie yesterday that says, Hey everyone, we're looking at a new patch for the PTS that will new include a high level look into the Jedi Sentinel, which is the Marauder. Right. Um, targeting next week to launch it. Should the timeline change, I will be sure to let you all know. Details will be provided in similar fashion as to when the Jedi Guardian PTS was live once the patch is available. So basically, when they say a high level look into the Sentinel, this is pretty much close to the final build of the Marauder for 7.0. So get ready, yeah. everybody. Yeah. If they do it on one side, it's essentially bounce the same. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And in AIE news, in AIE news, Tuesdays are our mon- mandatory fun night where the fun is mandatory, but attendance is not. That runs from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. And we switch back and forth from the Imperial side to the Rainbows and Butterflies Republic side. Referring to Star Wars The Old Republic, of course. Yes. And Fridays are the place to be. In AIE. Uh, I have a way. I want to rephrase that. AIE is the place to be on Fridays. No, that doesn't sound good. It doesn't. You're right. Okay. (laughs) So for once, you wrote it better. Okay. So Fridays are the place to be in AIE. And the first Friday of every month is Master Mode Flashpoints. We will walk you through the hardest difficulty in Flashpoints. Um, It's going to be fun and exciting. (laughs) And the second Friday of every month is Hard Mode Training. Um, We go through Hard Mode Operations in particular to help people advance through the more hard... uh, the harder difficulty operations. The third Friday of every month is achievement hunting. So all of the datacrons that you haven't found, um, funky world bosses, things like that, uh, trying to get everybody's achievements up to date. And the fourth Friday of every month, that's Friday, 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 Friday. It's Mega, the monthly Epic Guild activity where we'll sell you the whole seat, but you only need the edge. (laughs) This week's Mega. What are we doing, Marcus? (laughs) It doesn't get old. It really doesn't. And last week, when I talked about it, it wasn't as good. No, it wasn't. You can't beat the original. Yeah. So so tomorrow night, uh, we're going to be racing around Tatooine. That's right. Get your fanciest speeder and come to the the hottest, sandiest planet. With double suns. With the double suns, because sand gets everywhere, we're going to be racing around Tatooine. And um, it starts at 9 p.m. Eastern, and it's on the pub side. And we're going to be having so much fun. It's going to be Flag on the play. (laughs) It's on the pub side. Everybody makes fun of me all the time that I don't play enough on the pub side. Because every time somebody says, oh, what side are we on? And everybody's like, Marcus is involved. It's the imp side. So I was like, nope. I'm going to give it to all of you. We are doing a pub side mega. So tomorrow night, but just as a sidebar. Yep. I posted in the discord today. Tonight is the night. Mega is here. Who's ready? Like the hype train was going crazy. That's fantastic. Yes. And guess what? What? It's Thursday. (laughs) (laughs) It's tomorrow. Not today. And Max messaged me and said, uh, did somebody tell not tell me that Mega is tonight? Nobody's ready for that. And I was like, wait, what? Oh, I don't even know what day it is anymore. I've been working way too much. <laughs> it's fantastic. Way yeah, it's too, like much. too much Dauntless. Or not Dauntless. Uh, Destiny, Destiny 2. So Destiny 2. I say I've been playing a lot, but like, I really haven't. I mean, yes, I have. Who am I kidding? Yeah, I, it's I, great. Don't well, be afraid. No, or like I'll I'll finish raiding at like ten thirty, and I'll be like, oh, I'll do like one crucible match, or I'll do one thing towards my weekly objectives. Objectives, negatory. That's a mega negative. I end up being up until. Wait, midnight. what did you just say? Mega negative. Did you say mega the monthly epic guild activity? Anyways, if mega. This- it's Friday, 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 and it's mega. 
Sorry, were you saying something? <laughs> if all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE-Guild.org. Jump in the Discord and ask for a guild invite. The link is in the top right-hand corner of the website. Whether or not you play Star Wars The Old Republic or any of the other games that we play, we would love to have you. And we mean any of the other games you play. If you play Destiny 2, if you play World of Warcraft, if you play Star Wars The Old Republic, obviously... If you play any of the games that AIE plays, and it's basically every game, Pokemon, um, Mario things, whatever you play, people in AIE play, and we would love to have you. So go to AIE-Guild.org. You talked over me. <laughs> well, you were, doing it. you were doing it wrong. Do you have to pee? Of course I do. So we'll be right back. Jeez, Nick, hurry up. We're trying to finish this podcast. And we're back. So today we're talking all Rayu all of the time. <laughs> we should get a soundboard because that wasn't cutting it. <laughs> the Patrick Star. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you call that, but <clears throat> okay. So first and foremost, how did you get into streaming and or what came first, the chicken or the egg? The Did you get involved with Chimeri's channel or did you start streaming yourself first and then found Chimeri? Oh, so I started streaming uh probably about I see I've been married for three years, so about four years ago. Okay. Whoa! Uh, yeah, yeah. Big I man st- on campus over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so what was it? I had just started getting like really into PC gaming, and uh-huh. my younger brother messaged me and said, Hey, there's this really cool game that's in beta right now that you should play. And, you know, why don't we just stream it? And I said, well, let me look at the game first. So Mm -hmm. I saw it and I was like, okay, yeah, I can, I can see playing this and, you know, streaming, you know, what the heck, why not? And I never really thought anything of it. We'd always tossed around the idea of making YouTube videos and doing things when we play video games. Um, And so we streamed it. We had a good time and, you know, people started watching and tuning in and then it just kind of, went from there and then i started playing other games i went kind of a variety path from the main game i was playing at the time which i'll I'll touch on a bit later um but went into the no tell us now (laughs) wait 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 wait. you can't just say the game that i was playing we'll talk about that later like how bad could it have been was it barbie dream house oh that's a good game no that would have been a great game i probably would have been streaming for four years if i started with that um no i actually started streaming dauntless um the game that you're playing right now yep so yeah full circle it's like coming back home you know you never you never forget your roots um so why okay so you started streaming dauntless why did you stop streaming dauntless so i stopped streaming dauntless because what had happened was the game was still in beta um at the time and it was right before they finally launched the game and made it cross-platform that epic studios bought um bought the bought the 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 developer uh phoenix labs the game had no in-game content like you, you maxed out your weapons. You got to like the, it was like two of the hardest fights, two of the hardest behemoths to actually fight. And that was the end of it. It was just a grind. It was repetitive. And like, I, I tried to get into like speed running, uh, fighting behemoths, fighting optimal builds, trying to, to produce longevity for the game when there was no other content. And at the time with, uh, Epic buying Phoenix Labs, there was no plans on the horizon. Nobody knew what was going to come to the game. We just knew that it was going to be cross-platform. Um, and that was it. Okay, so awesome. I came back to it um, after I was actually stro- scrolling through my Twitter feed and a friend of mine had actually commented on one of their posts and I looked at it and I was like, man, it's been, because it's been three years since I played that. Like, I've, I've paid attention, looked at it, any information on it. I haven't touched the game in three years. When did the game get released? Uh, I want to say... Tw- 2017? Yeah, 2017, 2018. I think about that time. At least that's when I found it. Like, I know there was like a pre... Like, there was an alpha stage where a lot of people could get in and see what the game was about. But I only got into it when it was PC exclusive in a beta version. Okay, okay. I see. Yeah. Um. But they didn't have any plans for longevity. And so I saw that tweet and I said, you know what? I want to go see what this game is about now. So I actually, instead of just downloading it, I went to Twitch and I looked at some of the old uh, 
friends that I had made from the Dauntless community that were still streaming it. Actually, some of them even made partner off the game. Whoa. Um, wow. Exactly. So I started watching the gaming. I started watching the streams again. I started looking at the game and I was like, you know what? I want to give it a try, but I don't want to come into this with an account that has previous experience. I want this to be completely clean, a brand new account. I want to experience this as a new person for the first time. Um, made the account, got in and started playing it, and the whole game changed from what it was. It, it wasn't the same as it was before. The, the combat systems were different. The look and the feel of the game were entirely different. They added a whole new combat system into it that promoted longevity in the game. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. I was so happy to see it and to be like, you know what, this is the game that I started streaming on. This is the, the what I you know, built my original community on. Yeah. And I want, I want to go back to it. So that that's been incorporated into my channel and it, actually I'll be streaming it again tomorrow. Um, that's kind of the rolling theme for me now on Fridays is playing Dauntless. Um, but back to the, back to the streaming. Um, I stopped uh, after just getting married and just wanting to focus on, you know, what it was like to be married. You know, I've been single for a long time, got married and was doing this. So I stopped streaming. I, mm -hmm. I stopped on Twitch. I like cut everything off, kind of like cold turkey. I just, just dropped it all. Didn't watch streams, didn't interact with chats, didn't do anything. Um, I left the community. I left uh, all the people that I made, all the friends that I had made uh, back then and just kind of let everything fall apart. And... Then uh, COVID hit and I was playing, I had just started playing Star Wars Yoda to public again and found Kymiri. Um, I don't remember how I came across him. I just know I was playing PVP with some friends. We were in the discord call and I was curious about what Star Wars Yoda to public content looked like because I dabbled in it all those years ago. I streamed uh, Star Wars Yoda to public. I, played other things. It was one of those games that I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, so I started playing it again and I was looking at Twitch content and it was a lot of it was focused around PVP. Um, but I knew that PVP always got a bad rep for, you know, toxicity and competitiveness and everything. So it's, I was just kind of, I didn't want to like commit to a community and just like be involved in something like that until I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, Found Kymiri and just lurked in his stream. I think it was like for a month straight. I just kind of sat there, didn't say anything, but just like had him as background noise. Did he ever say anything to you? Nope. Never knew I was there for an entire month. I, I was just there. Um, and then one day I sent a message, said, hi, I'm coming back to Swotor after so many years. How long have you been playing? Yeah. And from there, it just took off. You know, he very, very welcoming, very warm person. And so I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to to be a part of that, to change toxicity in PvP. I hated it. I don't like, you know, that everybody has to play it a certain way with what's meta and everything else. Yeah, just as long as you have fun. Um, so got to playing with him. And I was actually playing on Satil Sean at Ugh. first. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Terrible. I know. I know. I, I was originally playing on Satil Sean and PvPing there. And then because I was hanging out in Chimera stream and hanging out with his community, I then came over to Starforge and started playing on Starforge with PvP and everything else. And from there, Chimera just noticed that I was very active in his chat. I was talking to people and he said, yeah, I want you to be a moderator. Okay. Sure. Wow. Um, so then, what is it like to mod for Kymiri? Oh God, he's a slave driver. I tell you, it, <laughs> it's long nights, you work weekends, no holidays, the internet's down, get on your phone. It's just terrible. I, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's actually no, really enjoyable. <laughs> it, it's actually really enjoyable. Um, you know, the community is very, very supportive, very interactive with each other. I know a lot of the people in there, we all play together off stream. Yeah. It's uh, very, um, Chimeri's community is very, very, very tight knit. Mm -hmm. It is. And it, I'm very thankful to be a part of that and, and to moderate for him. Um, well, sort of moderating. I've kind of shifted out and been more of an admin. So most of the stuff that I do to help, uh, Chimeri is all behind the scenes. I just kind of have the sword if I ever need it. <laughs> but no, it, it's enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. 
it, it really is to hear the ideas that he has to, to kind of give him some creative feedback and constructive feedback. Uh, and he's very open to it. Very, very open and receptive to it. And when he knows he's wrong, he hangs his head and says, Ray, you is right. Which <laughs> I need to get a recording of him saying, by the way. Yes, you do. <laughs> You can set your phone that every time they call, it records it. <laughs> Actually, that would be a good idea. I, I, I want to do that now. Yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah. So, so, so um, we heard through the grapevine. Oh, no. A little birdie told us that uh, you have quite the prolific rapping ability. Oh, no. <laughs> that rivals even... Atrax's <laughs> rapping ability. Oh no! <laughs> and so we're gonna need you to rap. We heard that uh, you're way better than Atrax. Wow! You would definitely beat him in a battle rap. So all we're asking this for rap is- game. This rap game. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's hear it. We don't all know. Right. We don't know how to how to set this up properly. I suppose because it's a podcast. I can't beatbox. <clears throat> I, I can't freestyle. Like that's the thing is. I, I, I grew up with Eminem, listened to Eminem constantly while I was doing, you know, football Listen, you can do about this, out, but you better start rapping. A <laughs> tracks is going to have your head. <laughs> I, oh my God. We I, can circle back, but there will be rapping at some point. Oh Lord. Okay. So, what type of fuel does the people's tank run on? <laughs> the people's tank. I run on nothing but pure aggro. In game, in the real life, it's just all aggro all the time. If you're not pulling, you're not feeding the tank. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, yep. So besides you know the games that you already do play, what other games do you want to play on stream? If you Oh man. Uh on stream it's it's been a toss up. I've kind of gone back and forth because I do want to kind of break out of the the just the Swotor mold. Um, yeah. Because like I've I've started dabbling in raiding, which uh, I've seen Marcus do a lot of. Kogus Biggs has done a lot of raiding. Um, but I I've started branching into Dauntless. I play Rogue Company and some Outriders off stream occasionally, and those are games that I don't really feel that you can be like as involved with the community as Swotor or Dauntless. So it's just been a toss up from those. Um, I have been, I honestly have been considering Rogue Company though, because I've played it with Atrax and Chimera and Rune. And there's a lot of other people that do play the game. And I would be interested to do like some custom lobbies with them. So definitely Rogue Company is on the table. Sure. You got your rap game ready? Oh, Lord. You're just waiting for that. Marcus is relentless. (laughs) He is. I'm a good interviewer. Oh, my God. Well, you can pull up a B. Okay. Are you a PC or console gamer? Uh, Both, honestly. I don't really prefer one over the other. I've done everything and still play. I've got my PS4 hooked up. I have a Nintendo Switch. Um I've tried the Xbox One, and that's I, I'm not really a fan of Microsoft's exclusive titles or just their consoles in general. I've never um, been really PC to console. Just gaming is gaming. I've even tried Google Stadia out. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of that or know what it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I've tried Google Stadia out. I love that. Um, there's a lot of really cool titles on there that I never thought in a million years would work on a streaming platform that are amazing and they look fantastic. I know Marcus is a graphics war, so it, it works out. It, it looks amazing and streams flawlessly. So I think, I think the idea of cloud gaming is a good idea. Yeah. I think if you're on the go, it's a good idea. I don't, I don't think it might be the way of the future, but for me, like it doesn't like, I feel like a game being on your hard drive means something to me. Kind of like some people still buy a disc for their PlayStation. Yeah, I get you. You know what I mean? Like kind of concept, even though you can't play the game just off the disc, it has to download to the hard drive. Like, Mm -hmm. but people still have that feeling and that might be because I'm an old man. You know what I mean? But I feel, but I feel like, 
cloud gaming, like on the fly gaming. That's awesome. Like Xbox Game Pass has it like you can legit play some of their games from your phone, like on your phone and you just stream it to your phone. Right. Like, that's awesome. That's what I love about the switch is like you can pull out the switch and just play it. You want to like a little bit of game, you go climb a mountain and maybe do like a, a, a shrine in Breath of the Wild. Right. And you got your fix and move on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, I, the biggest thing for me has just always been storage. Like games nowadays compared to what they were. Because like I grew up on like the original PlayStation where memory cards were a thing. And like you had a limited storage on those things. So like games were much smaller so you could get a a variety of games on it without having to buy another one. Now, like something like, I don't know, Call of Duty, for example, is like an update is 37 gigs. Like that's huge. Call of Duty? They're more than that. I've seen like 100 plus gig updates. The the problem with Call of Duty. Yes. It's what the problem with Call of Duty is they don't optimize their games. So basically, they just throw the gigs and say, deal with it. Right. You know what I mean? They're not optimizing the game, but I think it's because they don't have the time because they're release. They're still releasing a Call of Duty every year. That's insane. It's stupid. Yeah. Like, I personally believe they would make more money if the game released every two years and just with DLC. <clears throat> yeah. With the map packs. And a new, it, wars, a keep, new wars on maps. Keep the hype train rolling for each game, you know? Like, I'm not ready to be done with Cold War in the fall. <laughs> right, exactly. And then it's dead. Yeah. I mean, they're not really dead, but like it falls off pretty quick, you know? Well, yeah, because everybody wants the new one. All right. Um, yeah. Nick, you want to ask them the show question? I absolutely do. So what the show question? What's the one question we always ask? Oh, of course. So this is really important and we're really going to judge you. <laughs> um, what is your favorite Star Wars character? Actually, what I was going to judge you is the ice cream one. I forgot about this one. So what's your favorite Star-, Star Wars character in all of Star Wars? And if you want, Marcus and I can go first and give you our little snippets. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys are more than welcome to. No, I want to hear yours. No, I don't want like it has to be un, un- oh, oh, um, unlike biased. Untainted. Uninfluenced. Gotcha. That's gotcha. true. That's true. OK, well, take like really chew on it. Like who's your favorite character in all of the Star Wars everything? Well, it. I already have the answer. That's the funny well, there you, part. Well, there you go. Let it rip. Um, Anakin, Anakin Skywalker, but it's a specific, it's a specific version of Anakin. It, it's not okay. young Anakin. It's not when he became, you know, when he is Darth Vader or the, the war hero. No, it's specifically episode three, revenge of the Sith Anakin, where he's walking with the 501st into the Jedi temple. That shot. Cause I was a kid when that came out in theaters is the first star Wars movies I ever watched as a kid. Yeah, seeing that Anakin walking and when it cut to where he's walking forward with the dark cloak and he's just he he's, orange eyes. Yeah, the orange eyes and the 501st behind him walking into the Jedi Temple. It's just that version of Anakin is is my favorite character in all of Star Wars. He's um he's technically Darth Vader at that point, I think. Right. Yeah. He's Lord. Oh, Vader. Well, then, yeah. Darth Vader. But before but pre pre armor. Yeah. yeah before before Mustafa, the high ground. Right. <laughs> I have the high ground. Right. That was a terrible Obi Wan impression. Yes. Um, which was worse? Shaving your head. Which is worse? Shaving your head on stream, a karaoke night, or the squats? Oh man, you know, you when I when I saw that question, I was thinking about it. And, <laughs> oh man. No, it's actually none of those. Um, this was actually Marcus, but I don't think you were there for that or you hadn't come around yet. Um, the shaving the head, like I got some looks and you know, it, it was, you know, it, it was convenient because of the summer, the squats were just terrible and sucked in general. It, it was a bad decision <laughs> and karaoke night made for some interesting clips, but no, um, before we moved, I did on, I think it was March 18th. I did an Austin three sixteen stream. Um, if you can't tell, I'm a big wrestling fan. I grew up with, like, <laughs> I grew up in the latter parts of like The Rock and and Stone Cold and Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, and all those guys. But I did a, a 316 stream. And How funny is that? I slammed beers and that's fantastic. <laughs> I chugged. Uh, I think was it Chimera was keeping track. And this isn't this isn't my proudest moment, but I did 
10 beers in five minutes, just chugging them, not slamming them yet. That was straight chugging them. And that was painful. Wow. That was, of course that, it was painful. That, That's just a lot of carbonation. Oh yeah. That, that, oh, but I, I, and Coors lights, that'd be delicious. I know. Just, it's Shotgun. funny you say that because that's what it was. I was yes. slamming Coors Lights. And, oh, man. I was soaked. I was soaking wet, covered in beer. My apartment was covered in beer. Like, it took us forever to get the clean, to clean it. Sounds perfect. Yeah, oh, that sounds man. well. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do a cosplay stream, you're gonna, you need to do it all out. There's no question. You can't half ass Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, we, we didn't. I mean, we had glass breaking sound effects, screaming, hell yeah, slamming beers. It was all over the place. How so, wasted were you at the end? Dude, It. I think that stream lasted a grand total of two hours and about halfway through it. I was just like trying to keep going just belligerent dude i was playing like, what is it i've got I, I don't even know if it's still clipped or not but i was I, I was playing my tank of all things while doing this and i couldn't see i was just like just ha- hanging on trying to do something to produce content but it, it got to a point we had to call it of course you drank 10 beers in five minutes I don't care if you wore half of them. That's still insane. Yeah. And it, it, it sucked. It sucked during it. It sucked after it. And it, it was a rough 48 hours after that stream, but it was a lot of fun. I bet. That's awesome. Um, what is your, if you had to pick, what is your favorite game of all time? Kingdom Hearts. Whoa. Oh, I did not expect that. That's a great answer. The original. Yep. The original, um, the, it, uh, during the time when Kingdom Hearts came out, um, I was living on the coast of North Carolina and my dad was playing it and I was watching him and I was so fascinated by it was Disney. You know, as a kid, you just saw Disney, you saw Mickey and Goofy and Donald Duck, everyone having a good time laughing. But now you're watching them fight things like that's you awesome. In. Right. So watched him play that on the original PlayStation 2 and from there I was hooked and I have bought and owned and still have every single Kingdom Hearts game that's been released. Collectors that's editions it. and all. Got them all. Wow. Got to catch them all. Exactly. <laughs> Fun fact, I actually watched some Pokemon yesterday. It's on Netflix, I didn't realize and once I saw it, I was like, well I have to click an episode. Now, is it the new stuff or the old stuff? No, the original, like, from 2000 series of, like, Ash, Brock, and Misty. Wow. Like, going through the original stuff. It was cool. I'll have to talk. But anywho. Um, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Cookies and cream. Nice choice. Great choice. Can't, very solid. can't go wrong with cookies Nick, and cream. You can't fucking eat cookies and cream. Well, I wasn't you have a fake allergic reaction to it. I'm going to fake punch you in the dick. How about that? <laughs> dick punch. Uh, <laughs> Nick pretends that he's allergic to chocolate, and he's really not. I am allergic to chocolate. So the backstory for that is I was not allergic to chocolate when I was a little kid. And then basically as I hit puberty, I got allergic. And I get crazy migraines, and I throw up for like four hours straight, and it's terrible. But not, anyways. Not true. When I was on, it is true. Marcus constantly tries to feed me chocolate he'll be like you should just eat a reese's uh peanut butter cup on stream just take a big old bite or like he'll be like here you want a cookie it's oatmeal raisin and it's chocolate chip he's just a dick but anyways (laughs) um speaking of ice cream dude there's the best ice cream place on planet earth i don't care what you say it's called the scoop deck it's in wells maine and when i was on vacation last week we got we went there i think we were there for seven days we got ice cream five days out of the seven Wow. Well done, Nick. It was this epic. Well done. So their their thing is their waffle. What'd you get? Cotton candy? No, I got all kinds of different stuff. Vanilla? I got you know what? Screw <laughs> both of you guys. <laughs> they were awesome flavors. I got raspberry cheesecake. I got lemon and meringue pie. I got blueberry crumble. Uh and then I got blueberry crum- crumble three more times because it was my favorite flavor. So how about that? But anyways, it's epic ice cream. They have all kinds of stuff. Milky Way, Snickers bear claw like moose tracks whatever flavor you can possibly think of they got it but their proportions are insane so imagine like a giant waffle cone like before they even talk about the sizes the waffle cone is full of ice cream 
And then like in the big dome on the top, then they start putting scoops. So your a kitty is a half a scoop, but uh, and then a small quote unquote is a full scoop, but a scoop to them is a softball sized mound of ice cream. So you can go up to a large, which is three of those things. And it's like literally like a cartoon ice cream. That's three softballs of ice cream on top. It's insane. The portions so I would get like a small and it'd be like a whole meal. It's crazy. I feel like that's but, an appropriate size for ice cream. Yeah. I mean, you know what? Me too. If you're going to get like awesome, like quote unquote craft ice cream, like it should be enormous sizes. And like, if you can't eat it, no big deal, but this is what we got. It's awesome. Have you ever had the ice cream where they like cool it with liquid nitrogen? I have, um, where it's, it's like milk craft is a place near us in West Hartford, um, Connecticut, but it's okay. It's not great. I mean, it's a cool trick, but like, the best quality ice cream I've had is probably Scoop Deck in Maine or uh, like Randall's near me, although. But I like a nice like traditional ice cream, not like fancy tricks, you know. Coffee Oreo. Oh, that sounds good. The, the, the best. Where do you get that, Nick? I'm gonna get you some. Oh, I'm sure you are. No, I'm going to. I'll get you the white chocolate. You Oreo. know, white chocolate still has cocoa butter in it. Suck it up. <laughs> Jeez. So wait, is just, it, are I'm you allergic you... to the cocoa plant? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does not agree with me. What's her name? Pam. Pam. <laughs> More cocoa plant. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> from Archer. Yes, it's the wrong plant. I know. That's I'm just the... being funny. That's Jeez. it's coke. Cocoa. Cocoa. Hey! Yeah, chocolate is the cacao plant. This is. That's the coca plant. I know. I was being funny. Turned into cocaine. All right. Let's talk your no. stream channel. <laughs> that was uh, welcome to working class nerds where we're all sidebars all the time. Yeah. Sidebars <laughs> are the, like what make this show special or terrible. So um, is there one particular moment in your stream that really stands out to you? Like a special moment? Yeah, actually. Um, is when I, I came back to streaming I was so apprehensive and nervous to to stream again after just after walking away from it and and I was I had talked about it with Chimera for a bit back and forth about actually doing it. Um but it it was a couple months after I came back and the overwhelming support from everybody. I think it was a uh, when I did get, you know, my first hype train and just seeing the all the people that I had come to know and meet and support um, just, just coming together to, to in a way, tell me how much they appreciate what I've done for them and what is going on, go, what I'm going to do for them down the road. That was the moment that I actually kind of, I, I didn't have words. I couldn't speak. And all I could do was just hang my head and, and, and just, I, I've never felt that before. And that, that was a great moment. That's awesome. That's a really special way to explain your stream moment. Um, I guess our next question, last question would be, what are your goals for Twitch streaming? What do you want to accomplish? I have one more hidden one. <laughs> oh. oh, no. <laughs> the secret question. <laughs> well, a couple of baby steps. One foot, one foot in front of the other. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, That's an old movie. As so far, what, are, what, what, what are your goals? Uh, so I don't want to necessarily like Twitch partnership and all that kind of stuff, but I want to be able to build a community where doesn't matter what platform you play on PC, Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, Google Stadia. If you're a gamer, heck, even mobile gaming, if you're a person that enjoys video games and you want to find people who just enjoy video games, who enjoy playing games because it's a, it's a way to kind of, you know, get away from the mundane and, and the anxieties that we have in everyday life. I want to build that community. I want to build it to where you can just come in as a gamer and meet people that it doesn't matter. You know, hey, you're cool. You know, let's play this together. Hey, you want to try I this? Agree. Sure. So. No, and I agree completely, right? I can't um I can't imagine not having the community that we all do. It is really special. Um so what let me do you think you find yourself as a streamer 
more apt to play multiple games or to stick with one or two communities and leave it there? As a streamer, I feel like you if if your goal is to grow as a platform and to like push towards like partnership and stuff, then staying with one or two games and one or two communities is the avenue that you should is the avenue for that. Personally, no. I I want to play different games. I, I want to, you know, play with people off stream. I you know, that that's that's how you meet people. Like, especially now with COVID, like you got to be careful. And I mean, for God's sakes, I, Marcus, you're, you and Nick are hell and gone away from me. So is Chimeri. So are some of the other people that I've been gaming with my entire life. But, you know, some of those people I feel like are my closest friends and have been here for a while. So, you know, who's to say that the next person that you meet, you know, while you're playing uh freaking Mario party online is going to be your best friend. and could be your best man at your wedding. So right. play different games, broaden your horizons, branch out to different communities. It's quality over quantity, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Um, where can everybody find you? You can find me at twitch.tv slash it's Rayu. Also on Twitter, as well as Instagram, it's Rayu on both of those platforms. And how do you spell Rayu? R-H-A-I-U. Bam. All right. Are you going to drop that rap game? What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working, Working Class, Class Nerds. Nerds.